Hello, chemists. A lot of people were having issues with the assignment yesterday, so we're going to go through it. Um, you need your diatomic particles sheet and a periodic table. That will be extremely useful. Um, also, you should have all the notes. So right off the bat, we see diarsenic tritelluride. So as soon as we see prefixes, we know it's going to be molecular. So you know arsenic is AS. Di is abbreviation for 2. Telluride is tellurium, so TE. And then tri is 3. It's that easy. We'll try another one. We see more prefixes, so that's going to be molecular again. So phosphorus is P. Di is 2. Penta is 5. Oxide is O, so O5. Now here we have a formula to name. Silicon is a nonmetal. Nitrogen is a nonmetal, so it's molecular again. So try silicon tetra and then nitride because you still end with ID. Um, here we have Na, which is a metal, so you know it's going to be ionic. So Na is sodium, and then PO4, so that's going to be a polyatomic. So ionic naming, you just write the name of the metal, and then if it's a polyatomic, you just write the name of the polyatomic. So that one's phosphate. Next, here we have some uh, prefixes again. So tetris 4, so P, 4, O, deck is 10. There we go. Zinc cyanide. So we have a transition metal, but remember zinc is one of the special ones. And then cyanide, which is your good old-fashioned polyatomic. So zinc is Zn. You're going to crisscross those. So zinc is always positive 2, cyanide is a negative 1. So because you're going to have multiple, multiple polyatomics, you need to put it in parentheses. So close parentheses, and then it's going to be 2. Barium hydroxide, this is again, this is going to be a polyatomic. So barium is Ba. Its charge is positive 2. Hydroxide if you look at your chart, is also an, just a an pure negative, so it's going to need parentheses again because you're going to cross crisscross them, and that'll make hydroxide two. Arsen right here we have As2S3, that's arsenic and sulfur. So those are both nonmetals, so you're going to need prefixes. So diarsenic trisulfide. Sure, you're spelling these right. Um, that's what caused a lot of people to have problems. Um, here we have copper, so CuSO4. So you have copper, which is a transition metal. You're going to need to use the stock system here. And sulfate, which is SO4. Remember to never ever mess with your polyatomics at all. Don't change the subscripts. So we know it's going to be copper. We don't know what the charge is yet, so since sulfate is normally a negative 2, and there's no, it's not in parentheses, we know that it's a negative 2 to start with. So that makes copper also 2. Notice those are capital I's, not lowercase l's. That was causing a lot of people problems. Um, sodium, sodium sulfite, sulfite again, this is going to be a polyatomic this is SO3, so you need to figure out the charges. Sodium is going to be a positive 1. Sulfate, when you check your chart, is going to be a negative 2, so you have to crisscross them. So it's going to be sodium 2, and then SO3, because that's sodium sulfite. All right, this is the first 10. I'm going to do another video with the next 10, and we're going to make sure that you know how to do these, okay?